means we already have solved allowed energy levels of electrons in a periodic potential. These are known as block electrons. Now we would like to know how block electrons move when we apply an external electric or magnetic field. In this lecture, I am going to introduce semi-classical model to solve the dynamics of block electrons in externally applied electric and magnetic field. Before I start discussing about dynamics of block electrons, let me briefly revisit what we did for free electrons. For free electrons, energy eigenvalue for a given wave vector k is h cross square k square divided by 2m and the momentum is h cross times k. Velocity of an electron is momentum divided by mass that is h bar k divided by m. Using the energy dispersion relation, we can further write the velocity as 1 by h bar del E del K. Electrons collide with very heavy ionic codes and trajectory of an electron between collisions was calculated using Newton's second law of motion, dp dt is equals to force. Now we replace P with h bar K and rewrite this equation as F equal to h bar times dk dt. Force on an electron due to externally applied electric and magnetic field is given by the Lorentz force. F equal to minus E times capital E plus 1 by C V cross B, where minus E is the charge of an electron, capital E is the electric field, C is the speed of light, V is the velocity and B is the magnetic field. Thus, we have to solve h bar dk dt is equals to minus E times capital E plus 1 by C V cross B. We justified the use of classical equation by using the following arguments. The momentum uncertainty of free electrons is of the order of h bar times kf, where kf is the Fermi wave vector. Corresponding position uncertainty is of the order of one angstrom. Thus, according to Heisenberg uncertainty principle, classical description is not possible if we are dealing with some length scale of the order of few angstrom. Now, let us find out the length scales we are dealing with in electronic transport problem. Mean free path at room temperature is of the order of 100 angstrom. Wavelength of externally applied field is of the order of 1000 angstrom or even more. Thus, we are dealing with some length scale which is much larger than one angstrom. As a result, we are allowed to use classical equation to describe electronic transport. The classical approach used for free electrons as a simple generalization to electron in a periodic potential. This is known as the semi-classical model. In this diagram, I schematically show the situation described by the semi-classical model. A is the lattice constant. The electron is described by a wave packet. We can construct such a wave packet by using several block functions of different k values for a given band of index n. So these are the block functions. k is the wave vector of block function and n is the band index. 
by controlling the spread of k values in the sum, we can control the spread of the wave packet. The spread is typically few lattice parameters as shown in this diagram. Semi-classical model describes a situation where the applied field varies slowly in space compared to the periodic potential due to the underlying lattice. If we associate some wavelength with the applied field, then wavelength of the applied field is much greater than spread of the wave packet. which is larger than the lattice constant. Note that periodic potential of lattice varies in a scale of the lattice parameter A, which is much smaller than the spread of the wave packet. Thus, the periodic potential cannot be treated classically. We indeed have solved time-independent Schrodinger equation in presence of periodic potential to get the energy of electrons in a periodic potential. This is a partial classical limit because the external field is treated classically but not the periodic field of ions. This is why we call it a semi-classical model. Let us derive the equation of motion of an electron in an energy band. They look so similar to the free electron equations that I am going to actually start with the free electron equations and show the minimal changes required to get the equation of motion of block electrons. This is the E versus K parabola for free electrons and this is the energy dispersion relation for block electrons plotted using extended zone scheme. I have shown just two bands in this figure, band 1 and band 2. Wave function of a free electron with wave vector K is given by psi K of R is equals to 1 by square root of V times E power I K dot R. Wave function of a block electron is given by psi n k of r is equals to e power i k dot r. This is same as the free electron part times some function u n a of r. The function u has no simple explicit form. The only general property it has is the periodicity of the direct lattice. That is u n k of r plus capital R is equals to u n k of r, where capital R is a lattice translation vector. Note that in case of free electron wave function, we have only one index k and h bar k is the momentum of free electrons. In case of block electrons, we have two indices n and k. In this case, h bar k is the crystal momentum. and n is the band index. n is equals to 1 for band 1, n is equals to 2 for band 2, etc. In both the cases, allowed values of k are obtained from periodic boundary condition. In case of block electrons, n can be any positive integer. Energy of 
free electrons is a quadratic function of k in case of block electrons for a given band index n e n k is the energy but e n k has no simple explicit form we have to solve time independent schrodinger equation to get en of k velocity of free electron is momentum divided by mass in terms of energy dispersion relation it can be written as 1 by h bar del e del k in case of block electrons energy depends on k as well as the band index n as shown here thus velocity also depends on both wave vector k and band index n and can be written as v n k is equals to 1 by h bar del e n k del k comparing with the free electron equation we just have to add the band index in case of block electrons equation of motion for free electron can be obtained by equating rate of change of momentum given by h bar times dk dt to the lorentz force this is directly from newton's second law of motion in case of block electrons velocity v depends on band index and we rewrite the equation of motion as h bar times dk dt is equals to minus e e plus 1 by c vn k cross b where vn k is the velocity of block electron with wave vector k and band index n given by this equation again comparing with the free electron equation of motion we just need to add the band index n to get the equation of motion for block electrons we got the equation of motion of electron in an energy band by doing minor changes to the free electron equation of motion let me show you a simple derivation of equation of motion for band electrons this will also help us to understand the difference between free electrons and band electrons equation of motion which look so similar electron in an energy band can be represented by a wave packet made up of block functions around some particular wave vector k let me show a simple 1d case by considering external electric field only extension to external magnetic field is straightforward groove velocity of the wave packet is given by vg equal to d omega dk and since e is equals to h bar times omega we can write groove velocity as 1 by h bar del e del k effect of periodic potential is included in energy dispersion relation e of k we can ignore band index for this particular derivation say we apply some external electric field e work done by external electric field on the electron is given by minus e times capital e times vg times delta t where small e is the charge of the electron 
capital E is the electric field, Vg is the group velocity and T is time. Note that minus E times E is the external force. Now we can just write delta of E is equals to d e dk times delta of k and we can further rewrite it as h bar times vg times delta of k. Let me denote this equation as 1 and this one as 2. Now, comparing 1 and 2, we get h bar times delta k is equals to charge times the electric field times delta of t. And from this equation, we can write h bar dk dt is equals to minus E times capital E. Note that this term is the external force. Now I revert back to the 3D and write the equation of motion in this form. This equation has the same form for free electrons and electrons in an energy band. However, there is a significant difference. In case of free electrons, F is the total force and H bar K is the momentum. On the other hand, in case of electrons in an energy band, F is the external force and H bar K is the crystal momentum. Effect of force on electrons due to the ions are included in the energy dispersion relation. Now we know the equations of motion of the semi-classical model. These equations look very similar to the free electron equations. Only difference is we have to use actual energy dispersion for block electrons instead of free electron Ek parabola. Let us focus on finer details of the semi-classical model. First, let us understand what are the inputs to the model. We have to provide the energy dispersion relation En k. The model takes En k as a given function and does not tell anything about how to compute them. The purpose of the model is to relate the band structure to the transport properties. Using the semi-classical model, one can get transport properties from a given band structure. One can also deduce features of the band structure from the observed transport properties using semi-classical model. Other than the energy dispersion, semi-classical model requires two more inputs. External electric field E and external magnetic field B. Note that there is some electric field because of the ions also. However, electric field due to the ions are not included in capital E. Fields due to the ions are already incorporated in energy dispersion E and K because we took into account the effect of periodic potential U while solving for E and K. Thus, all the effects of periodic potential is contained in the energy dispersion relation and semi-classical model has no other explicit information about the periodic potential of the ions. An electron is described by a wave packet and it has a mean position R mean wave vector k and band index n. I call it mean position 
and mean wave vector because a wave packet has some spread in real as well as wave vector space as it has to satisfy Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Semi-classical model predicts how these three quantities R, K and N change in the presence of external electric and magnetic field. Band index N is a constant of motion. Semi-classical model ignores possibility of any interband transition. Time evolution of position and wave vector of an electron with a band index N is given by two equations mentioned here. Effect of finite temperature can be incorporated by Fermi distribution the same way we did for free electrons. Fermi distribution is given by F E K is equals to 1 divided by e power i e k minus mu where mu is the chemical potential divided by kbt kb is boltzmann constant and t is temperature plus 1 this is same as the case of a free electron now since these are block electrons, we have to add the band index n. Let us discuss about few more subtle points in semi-classical model. The first question that comes to our mind is, what is the nature of collisions for block electrons? Drude assumed that electrons collide with heavy ionic cores. This is no longer valid for block electrons. Anyway, it is difficult to justify electron ion collision based on the experimental fact that mean free path in metals is very large, much larger than interatomic distance. Block theory discards electron ion collision on theoretical ground as well. Since block levels are stationary solution of Schrodinger equation in presence of periodic potential if an electron in some block state has a non-zero velocity then that velocity will persist forever. Interactions of the electron with ions have already been taken care while solving the time independent Schrodinger equation. Thus, we cannot consider electron ion collision anymore. This leads to the conclusion that conductivity of a perfect crystal is infinite. Waves can propagate in a perfectly periodic lattice without attenuation. However, if perfect periodicity is disrupted somehow, then there is a problem. Electrical resistivity we observe in metals is because of defects which disrupts the perfect periodicity. A defect can appear in the form of some impurity atom or in the form of some missing atom known as vacancies. Even if we manage to eliminate defects completely by very careful processing technique, still there will be thermal vibration induced distortions from the perfect periodicity. At finite temperature, atoms vibrate about their mean position in the lattice. This leads to disruption of perfect periodicity of the lattice and this is why resistivity of metals increases with increasing temperature. Next question is, how many bands do we need to consider in semi-classical model? At T equal to 0 Kelvin, all the states above the Fermi energy are vacant. Even at finite temperature, states with energy many kBT above the Fermi energy remains unoccupied. Thus, 
we need to consider only those bands having energies within a few kbt of fermi energy note that semi classical model calculates rate of change of crystal momentum only due to external fields not due to the periodic field of the lattice the effect of periodic field is embedded in energy dispersion relation